Hi, this is Alex from PHP Academy. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at jQuery callback functions. Now, callback functions in general sound pretty boring and don't really sound like they could be much fun. But in fact, callback functions are the absolute must when you're creating something that requires a response from um, an event. Uh, you can do it other ways, but this callback functions are probably the best and easiest way to do this. Now, um, in our jfunk.js file, I've uh, blanked this from the last tutorial, if you'd watched the last tutorial. And in index.php, I'm just going to carry on and write um, something in here. Now, you'll notice that I've got rid of the um, script uh, which references our jfunk.js um, file. And the reason for that is that we need to add it in a different place on our page. When we use callback functions, we need to ensure that the processing is done after the elements have been rendered on the page. So let's just go ahead and copy this and paste that down there and we'll make reference to our uh, jfunk.js. But this time we're going to just put it down here, okay? And the last thing after our body or rather just before our closing body tag. Now in this tutorial we're going to be creating uh, something like a Twitter input field where you would enter a tweet which has to be a maximum of 140 characters. You can't go beyond the 140 characters so you need some way to validate what the user has typed and give them immediate response. You'll notice that on Twitter when you're typing a tweet, if you do use Twitter, you get a, a constant feedback of how many characters you have left. So let's go ahead and create our form and make sure that looks okay. And then we can go ahead and create the callback function. Okay, so let's go ahead and create um, a simple input field. Um, I'm gonna have the type obviously as text because we want the user to be able to type. Um, I'm also gonna set the size to 50. And then I'm going to set a max length, and the max length is going to be 140. Now, obviously, the max length um, attribute on the input um, field, on the input element, doesn't solve the problem of processing in the back end. So, if you were to do this and you were to incorporate jQuery as we're going to do in this tutorial, you'll notice that you will need to process the length in the background as well, just to ensure that the user can't submit anything because you don't want your user to submit something um, having modified the form. We're also gonna give this an ID and I'm gonna call it tweet box. And this is what we're gonna be referencing later. Now, I'm not gonna be adding an on click event to this because, or an on something, on key up or anything like that, just for the simple reason that we're gonna be doing it using a callback function and we're gonna check constantly if this value has changed. So let's go over to jfunk.js. In fact, we'll preview this first just to make sure it looks okay. Yep, it does. Okay, so the user can type in data. Now, the first thing we want to do in uh, jfunk is we want to define a variable that's the maximum characters allowed. So let's go ahead and say tweet underscore max, and that's gonna equal 140, okay? Now down here, I'm gonna create a dollar sign. We're not actually creating a function for this because we're not uh, using a, an HTML um, on click event or an on key up or on key down event. But I'm actually gonna reference the tweet box. So tweet underscore box. And I'm, this time I'm gonna say dot key down. And then I'm gonna do two brackets and end that. So essentially what we've done now is we've created an event handler which is gonna handle code inside of here um, when we have key down but we need to provide it with a callback event and we do this by creating a function definition inside of our um, uh, event handler so we're saying function what I'm then going to do is just outline the block that we need to um, enter all our code in so here is where everything's going to go once the user has pressed a key down on this specific element that we have referenced. So I'm going to pull that down a bit and just pull that in. So now we can start writing our code uh, inside of here. Now just as an example I'm going to say alert hello. So what's going to happen now is when the tweet box has a key down we're going to um, 
execute, if you like, this block in this function. Okay, so let's go back and press F5. I'm going to click in here and I'm going to type A. You can see that immediately I have a um, dialog box come up, say hello. And this is going to happen every time I type something in. So now you can see that um, every time I've typed a character, we've had a callback. I've even just pressed backspace and it's even alerted me. So every time we have a key pressed or a key down inside this tweet box, remember that's this here, then we actually um, do everything inside this function. So we can make use of this by actually keeping track of how many characters the user has typed, subtracting the tweet uh, or subtracting this from the tweet, uh, the maximum tweet amount, and then relaying it back to the user. So let's go ahead and test this out. We need to first of all get the um, amount of characters that the user has currently typed. So I'm going to create a new variable and this is going to be called tweet length. And that's going to equal to dollar. Remember we use dollar when we're referencing a specific element. And this is hash tweet underscore box. And that's dot val and then brackets. Now this gives us the value that the user is currently typing in. So the value of the text that's currently in the box. So if we go ahead and, um, in fact, let's go back to our page and create the area that we're actually going to just display our feedback to the user. So we're going to come down just below this and I'm going to say div id equals end the div and we're going to say tweet feedback. Now we've created a new div which we're not going to be typing anything into. We're going to let our event handler handle what's put into there. And the idea of this is tweet feedback, so we can reference this uh, here. So now let's say um, a dollar sign, and then in here I'm going to say hash tweet feedback dot HTML. This is another new function that I've introduced. You've seen the val function, which you ha we haven't seen before, and the HTML function, which we haven't seen before. And in here I can simply put tweet underscore length. Now this variable is pointless, pointlessly named in this example because it's just going to return what's the, what the user's typed. We're going to add something just onto the end of here in a moment to actually get the length. But just for now, this is just going to show us how we've got the length, the value of uh, what's been typed. So if we refresh, ignore that because that was from the previous page. If I click in here and I start to type something, you can see that it hasn't completely worked at the moment. I'll explain why in a moment. Um, but um, it is relaying the inf uh, well everything that we're typing in. Now I'm using the uh, key down, and I'm actually going to change this to key up, and you'll see the difference that this makes. So A B C. You can see it's relayed the information properly. This is just because of the way that the uh, handler handles things. So A B C. Even when I backspace, that's classed as a key up because I've pressed the key and then I've released the key. So now we're just relaying the data that's coming back to us. So now if we add something onto here, we'll be able to relay the length and that's just dot length. Okay. There's no brackets involved in this because this is not jQuery. Uh, this is not a jQuery function. Okay, I'm going to refresh and start typing something, and you can see that this value is now updating with how many characters is currently uh, in, well, the length of the text that's currently inside here. And this does include spaces, okay? So if we were to type, hello there, how are you? It's actually counting the amount of characters uh, inside of here. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Uh, you can see that we've got this problem with it being zero. In this case, uh, it doesn't matter because we're constantly relaying a number back to the user. Uh, but in other cases, you might want to just create an if statement to check um, if the value is zero. Okay, so we're going to get rid of this because we don't actually want that at the moment. But now what we want is to, uh, to create a new variable called tweet left. And this is going to be the amount of characters left. In fact, let's call that char left to make things simpler. So the characters left is going to be tweet underscore max minus tweet underscore length. So now we have the amount of characters that the user has left to type. And you've probably already guessed, we're just going to say dollar. And then in here, we're going to reference our tweet feedback div. 
I'm going to say dot HTML inside of here I can just type some text so you have uh, let's just put a zero in there for a moment until we can substitute in this uh, char left variable you have zero characters remaining okay so in here we can cut off that and we can add on the rest of the string so it's a uh, almost cat concatenation really so I'm gonna say you have space something characters remaining remember the space in there as well I'm gonna say char underscore left so now what's gonna happen is when we type you'll see that as we type it tells us how many characters we have remaining and we can delete characters which will increase this amount back to 140 uh, we can type whatever we want really okay so as well as learning how to create something like Twitter users we've also looked at this callback function here based on this event handler here so we've included this call uh, callback function to take into account the length of the current tweet using this uh, jQuery function here and then just taking the length of that value there we've then uh, calculated the characters left and we have fed them back using dot HTML which is essentially just putting data into this div here and another interesting thing to notice is uh, let's just refresh the page if we start typing something here when we go to view our page source you'll notice that the div contents is empty and this is just the way that it's processed on the page by jQuery we don't actually have the uh, data relayed back to us in HTML uh, that's just something to point out in case you're trying to debug and view the source but jQuery doesn't actually have um, an effect of actually modifying the HTML document so this uh, essentially here is just feedback from jQuery so now you've learned to do that you've learned what callback functions are this is a really useful way forward to uh, creating something dynamic where you're feeding back something to users as they're typing something so I highly suggest that you play around with this kind of functionality and you'll probably find that it ties into most things that you'd want to actually create um, with regards to feeding back information from users but the main well relaying information to users but the main thing to note is this callback function uh, in here based on this event handler